There was no escape because all travel was banned. Any expression with joy, of joy was suspect, so no one laughed. The communists had always claimed they wanted to spread human habitus, but they never did. People, quote, withered from loneliness, authority, loyalty, all sense of identity were monopolized by the Ankaleo. One of the worst things that can happen to a man and a woman in our society is identity theft, now so common that we have insurance policies to protect us if it happens to us. Cambodia's conquering communists inflicted identity theft on their own people. Only the reluctant desertion-ridden American army stood between the Southeast Asian communists and their victims, and we proved a broken reed. Do not ever let anyone tell you there was no reason for us to fight in Vietnam. We fought there essentially to prevent the worst evil in history since the Aztec human sacrifices in pre-Columbian Mexico. We were about to suffer the first defeat in our history at the hands of Ho Chi Minh, the communist leader of Vietnam. It was to avert that hellish fate they avert the hellish fate that had befallen Cambodia that all the young men named on the Vietnam War Memorial, the memorial that has no cross, died to prevent and nevertheless failed. President Nixon, facing impeachment for the Watergate burglary and the ensuing cover-up, had been forced to resign the preceding August. His vice president, Spiro Agnew, had been forced to resign already because of a corruption scandal. Nixon's new vice president, Gerald Ford of Michigan, succeeded him on his resignation. A better and humbler man than his, than his predecessor, Ford would have been the first to admit that he was no great leader, no history maker. He had no magic solutions for Southeast Asia. Indeed, by his time, the disaster there would have challenged Napoleon or even Alexander the Great to reverse. Every American would prefer to forget the magnitude of that disaster, given special poignancy by the fate of Cambodia and the evacuation of Vietnam, when the heirs of George Washington and Abraham Lincoln abandoned all people who had trusted them. But the historian is the guardian of memory. He must relentlessly chronicle both shame and heroism. In the American evacuation of Cambodia and Vietnam, there was nothing but shame, and no trace of heroism except for a man named Ed Daly, who, when all was falling, flew a plane load of Vietnamese orphans from Vietnam to California on his own initiative and at his own cost to enable them to begin new lives in the land of freedom and opportunity. The regime Anka Leo set up in Cambodia is full of echoes from communist history. Echoes of war communism under Lenin, echoes of the Ukrainian Kara famine and the great purge under Stalin, echoes of the great leap forward and the great cultural revolution under Mao Zedong. In all these things, Pol Pot simply did what his masters and teachers had done before him, while ignoring their second thoughts and counsels of caution. There is one parallel from the history of revolution and communism born in revolution. It comes from the history of the reign of terror in the French Revolution, which Paul Pot was taught at the Sorbonne, that's the University of Paris, to glorify. At the height of the reign of terror in 1793, the French city of Lyon rebelled against the revolutionary government. Like Phnom Penh, it was taken after a long siege. The National Convention, then leading the French Revolution, decreed the abolition of the defiant city. As we shall see, Pol Pot did exactly the same in Cambodia when he decreed the abolition of his own capital, Phnom Penh. The National Convention said, quote, the city of Lyon shall be destroyed. On the ruins of Lyon shall be raised a column attesting to posterity the crimes and the punishment of the royalists of the city with this inscription, Lyon may war liberty, Lyon is no more, end quote. So do the rest of the revolution deal with its enemies. In 1975, we abandoned both Vietnam and Cambodia. Cambodia first. On April 1st, 1975, the Cambodian leader, Lon Nho, having suffered a stroke, departed. And on the 11th, all the remaining Americans in the sadly named Operation Eagle pulled. To put it bluntly, we cut and ran like whipped dogs with our tails between our legs. 
In that great movie, Patton, General Shaw, Patton says proudly that Americans have never lost and will never lose the war, but we lost this one. On April 16th, the last Cambodian Patriot commander, General Sat Sukhan, Sat Suk, Sakhan, left the Cambodian capital of Phnom Penh with his family by helicopter. The next day, the communists marched in, resolved to impose their rule at once. Quote, the insurgent soldiers were overwhelmingly boys and girls in their teens. They gave the impression not of children, but of malevolent robots. Grim, robot-like, brutal, wrote Sidney Shanberg of Phnom Penh's Congress, with weapons, grenades, and rockets that dripped from them like trees. Silent and unsmiling, the communist soldiers filed through the jubilant crowds that quickly fell, quiet and fearful. Answering cheers and waves with mask-like indifference, they stopped traffic, ordered drivers out of their vehicles, and corralled surrendering soldiers into frightened groups, forcing them to disrobe in the streets. The mood in the capital changed as if a switch had been thrown. One of those who felt elation turned to dread over the space of a couple of hours was a French priest, priest Francois Ponchot. During 10 years in Cambodia, Father Ponchot had lived among and come to identify with peasants and the urban poor. In the war years, sickened by the corruption, callousness, and social injustice of the law and all government, he sympathized with the, re with the revolution. Although he knew from refugees of acts of cruelty in the liberated zone, he still believed that Cambodia could escape its misery with a communist victory. But now, as he watched the first revolutionary soldiers arrive, Doubt became a physical sensation, as if a slab of lead had fallen on the city. Everyone, Cambodians and foreigners alike, thought this had to be Phnom Penh's most miserable hour after long days of fear, fear and privation, Sidney Shamberg wrote of the Republic's fall. They looked ahead with hopeful relief to the collapse of the city, but they, for they felt that when the communists came and the war finally <laughs> ended, at least the suffering would be over. All of us were wrong. This end of quote. This quote is taken from a book by Father Pancho with the unforgettable title of Cambodia Year Zero. In one way, Paul Pot went beyond anything that any government, communist or Nazi, had ever done or thought of doing in the accursed 20th century. It was an act of such mindless horror that most people recall, recoil from remembering or even mentioning it, as I do. It was the ultimate product of the denial that truth exists, for it involves the annihilation of all those that believe the truth does exist. Paul Pot and his communists removed every living person except top party officials from his capital city, and he did it that very day. Not the next week, or the next month, or the next day. Not with any notice, not with any time to think or remember the homes and love of the people. That day, that afternoon, until the sun set and on through the night. The people of Cambodia were exiled from the world. In a very real sense, they were sent to hell. Three million people, all gone by the next morning, except for the party men and the soldiers. No other exceptions, none. Imagination quails before the horrors of that march. Hospitals were emptied, some patients being pushed into the old streets with needles still in their arms. If they had no beds, they crawled like worms. The roads and streets could not begin to hold them all. They were so thickly clumped together that, that they could move only a few hundred yards an hour. The soldiers shot any who lagged, and any they felt like shooting. The very small children, the old, the sick, soon began to fall. They died where they lay and the driven hordes trampled their corpses. I used to think that the supreme horror of history, in history, was the Aztec human sacrifices, but now I think it was this scene in Cambodia in what Father Poncho called the year zero. The devil must have loved every minute of it.